Good morning, my name is Alex Brown and I'm the worship leader here at Faith Builders Church. We're so glad that you decided to tune in and join with us. We have an amazing service planned for you with worship, uh, some great announcements and a powerful word that's gonna be spoken over your life. I know you're gonna be blessed by what happens here today, but in case you ever wanna join us in person, our service times are at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. If you have any prayer requests or just wanna let us know that you're here, please share that in the comments below and we would love to hear from you. Our service will begin shortly, so get ready to experience Faith Builders.
I'm so glad that you tuned in with us today. I don't know what part of Good Friday that you are watching this, but I believe today you're going to be blessed and touched at some point. Whatever phase of your relationship with the Lord you're in today, maybe you're a strong Christian, uh, maybe you just gave your life to Jesus and you're a baby Christian, or maybe you just came across this and knowing Jesus and Christianity is so new to you. I believe that every one of us are going to be touched today. I am going to be receiving communion together with all of us, so I have my cute little communion cup. You don't need to have a perfect little communion cup to receive that today. So before we get started, if you want to gather that, whether it be a cracker, a piece of bread, or water, just something that's symbolic to uh, receive our communion together at the end of our program. But I do want to share a message with you today, and today is Good Friday. And as I was uh, studying and putting this together, you know, we call it Good Friday. And in my mind, I go, I wonder why we call it Good Friday, when in reality for Jesus, it was a day of suffering and it was a day of great torment. And so I just want to take you through the journey of the cross to really discover why do we call 
Good Friday, such a good day for us. As believers in Christ, Good Friday is a crucial day of the year because it celebrates what we believe to be the most momentous weekend in history. We are in Holy Week. Today is Good Friday. Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Easter together. I I invite you to come and join us here at Faith Builders, two services we're having together. And in, in a couple short days, we are going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is the story. That is the message of the hope of this day, Friday, where Jesus laid down his life. Ever since Jesus died and was raised from the dead, Christians have proclaimed the cross and the resurrection of Jesus to be the decisive turning point for all creation. Having the message of the Good Friday is as we accepted Jesus was the turning point for our entire life. And I want to read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and what Paul stated. And it says this, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel. Everybody say the gospel, because that's really what we're talking about on this holy week and this incredible weekend. Proclaim to you the gospel which I preached to you, which you also received, and which you also stand. Aren't you thankful you have a gospel to stand in Christ Jesus? By which also you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, in this good news of the gospel, we have to hold fast to what we believe in. We cannot be tossed and turned by the world's circumstances and, and disappointments and maybe not feeling God. We've got to hold on to that message of salvation of the cross of Jesus Christ. But in verse 3, which I think is so powerful, Paul says this, he said, for I delivered to you, first of all, you know, the most important message that he wanted to bring to the church was the first thing, the most important thing, and it was this, the first thing that he preached was, unless um, you believed and received that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day. That is the first most important message you can believe in today, that Jesus died a gruesome death on that cross. He died and laid his life down, but he rose again on that third day, and you have been given resurrection power. That's the most important thing that you can get from the message of Good Friday, that Jesus laid his life down for you and whatever that you're going through. You know, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, and many of us know this, but just receive this in your heart today. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So there's not one person that we were not born into a sinful world that Jesus didn't come and die for. We can maybe try to stand on our own righteousness, but it's in our own vein. But Jesus came because all have sinned. And actually, in 1 John 1.10, it says this, that if you say that you have not sinned, you make him a liar and his word is not true. So we have to understand that every one of us was born into a sinful state, into brokenness, into shame, into failure. But when we come to the cross that happens on Good Friday, that messy story that Jesus was brutally killed and and murdered on that cross and the blood was shed on that cross that day, that gruesome death is what gives us that good news today that because of my sin, I can truly be forgiven. And I'm so thankful for the cross of Jesus Christ in my life. And in Romans uh, 6, chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse 4 and 5, it says this. I love this so much. Romans 6, verses 4 and 5. It says, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. 
when we come to the cross and we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sin and forgive us of our past, we have to receive that gift of salvation. And according to Romans, we have to know that we have been resurrected like Jesus was resurrected on Easter Sunday. He was resurrected on that third day and was given a new life. You have a new life in Jesus. And maybe you've never been able to receive that full forgiveness. And maybe you've never said yes to Jesus. The only way that you can walk in that new life is to receive the message of the cross, which was the sin that was put upon Jesus. All of our mistakes was put on him on that day so that we can receive eternal life and walk in a new life here on earth. And verse five says this, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, what unites us together? Coming together for the unity of what he did at the cross. Certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Listen, we've got to understand the Good Friday was the day that he laid his life down. And if I can come into agreement and receive that gift, that everything that I've gone through was on the cross. It was nailed with him that day. If I can receive that in unity, then you can receive the resurrection life, the resurrection power, your forgiveness, your authority in Christ, and all of your days are brand new. God doesn't just turn a page in our life, in your book. He opens up a brand new chapter. How many are ready for a new chapter? Come on, Jesus, let's turn that chapter so that I can have a brand new day in my life, a brand new day in my family and for my children because Jesus paid the price for us. So why is it called Good Friday? How can we call a day that was so horrible for Jesus and call it a Good Friday? In order for the good news of the gospel to have true meaning for us, we first have to understand the bad news of our old condition that we were sinful people that we were under condemnation, that we were under guilt. And when you can understand that we needed Jesus as a savior and because of the, the things that he went through, the bad things that he went through, I can know that through him laying his life down, the good news of the bad news was that I have resurrection life. The good news of the bad news at the cross was that all my guilt and my shame was broken. The good news of the bad news at the cross was that I realized that I was enslaved to my sin. I was enslaved to old behavior. I'm enslaved to addiction. And the good news is because of the cross, I have been set free by the power of the cross. When you understand what Jesus really did on Good Friday, you understand that we needed the cross of the bad news to receive the freedom of God's grace. Because according to the law, we were in a hopeless condition. And the law wasn't bad. The law just pointed in our life how worthless we are. We can look at the law and realize that I'm worthless without a savior. But when you go to the cross, when you know the good news of the cross, you know that you've been forgiven. You can now receive the grace. Somebody say grace. You can receive the grace of God and receive the freedom and the relief of eternal salvation, not only just in heaven, but also here on earth. We are free from that law, amen? Say, thank you, Jesus. So in the same way that Good Friday was good, even though it was terrible, it brought us the joy of Easter Sunday. So what does that mean? How can it be good because of Good Friday? Even though it was terrible, it gave us Resurrection Sunday. Amen? So it's bad, but it's good because without the cross, we would never have resurrection. So we can celebrate this day that Jesus laid his life down because of the power of forgiveness and the power of a brand new day that he gave us. You know what's so awesome about Jesus is the Bible says that he laid his life down. He came with one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to obey his Father in heaven. And when Jesus went to that cross, what we have to understand on Good Friday, as he hung on that cross in obedience to his Father, because if you remember, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was struggling with that. The Bible says that he wept tears of blood. 
He wasn't struggling with the cross because that was his assignment. He was struggling with being separated from his father because he knew in that minute, minute that he was on the cross that the wrath of God against sin was going to be put upon his son. And the Bible says that sin cannot glory in the presence of God. So Jesus knew in that moment that he lived for his father. He lived to obey his father. He lived to everything that his father said to do. He did. And he knew that his father said, if you'll go to the cross, you'll be that remission of sin for the generations to come for eternity. And that moment that Jesus hung on the cross, listen, the wrath of God of sin came upon Jesus and it was poured out for the nations to receive salvation. It's the power of the cross. Do you know when Jesus was hanging there and we hear many words, I think on the earlier video you heard Jesus say it in that video, but when sin came upon Jesus, he cried out to the Father and he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. What does that mean? He cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What did Jesus experience in that moment? Everything that we have been struggling with was marked on his body in that moment. And when God looked down at his son, he no longer saw his son, his perfect son that he sent on earth. He saw the sin that we committed. He saw the failures. He saw the abuse. He saw you as the abuser. He saw the addictions. He saw the anger, all of those things. So when God looked down, he can't look upon sin. So he turned his back on his son. And his, Jesus was removed from the presence of the man he loved. And it reminds me of a generation of young people that had fatherless homes. Jesus understood what it meant to not have the father. Jesus understood what it meant to seemingly have the father that he loved turn his back on him. Don't you see that everything at the cross was put there for the forgiveness of your sins? Jesus took all that shame and all that suffering. And in John 10, verses 17 through 18, it says this, Therefore, my Father loves me, this is Jesus, because I lay my life down, that I may take it again. No one takes my life from me. They couldn't have drugged Jesus to that cross if he wasn't willing to lay his life down. He could have interrupted at any time for God to intervene for him, but he didn't. No one could have taken his life. He gave his life as a free gift, the shame and the suffering for us. He said, I lay my life down. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to pick it up. Don't you love that about Jesus? He was in full authority, full control. Even though it looked like he had to lose control, he gave his life willingly. We serve such an amazing Savior. In 1 John 2, it says this, that it talks about that Jesus was an advocate for us. In 1 John 2, I'll just read it to you really quick. 1 and 2, it says, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Do you know that Jesus was your advocate? And that is so powerful because I looked that word up and it literally means to physically support you. Jesus is still advocating for you today on Good Friday and then after Good Friday because he resurrected to the Father and he makes intercession for you today. He advocates. That means he supports you. But I also love the other definitions I found about advocate. And it means to be highly sensitive about the feelings of others. Isn't that good? That Jesus is highly sensitive about how you feel. He cares about you today. Not the corporate church. He loves the church and the bride. But Good Friday was meant for you listening by yourself today. He's highly sensitive to how you feel and how you're broken and what you've been through. That makes him your advocate. It means he's gentle and caring. Isn't that beautiful? He's a strong focus on the future. 
So when you receive Jesus in your life and he becomes your advocate at the cross on Good Friday, that advocate cares about you. He doesn't judge you. He doesn't blame you. He cares about you and he forgives you, but he also has a strong focus on where your future is supposed to be. God sees you in your future. He sees you healed. He sees you whole. He sees you full of forgiveness. He sees you forgiving others. He sees you as a new creation. That is the advocate of God. Verse two says, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ourselves only, but for the whole world. Thank you, Jesus. That's why all over today through Sunday, we're going to hear the message of Easter, the resurrection power of our risen Savior. Why? Because it's for the whole world to know the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have to understand that Jesus came as a perfect man that laid his life down willingly. And in Romans 3.26, it says, why did Jesus come? To demonstrate at the present time right now, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that we might be just, that, excuse me, he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. What does that mean? He was the just, a man with no sin, and he was also the justifier, what, which means just as if I never sinned. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He became both so that we can walk in the fullness of our relationship today. So powerful. So let's close with this today. The cross is where we see the convergence of great suffering and God's amazing forgiveness. Isn't that good? Let me say that again. Good Friday, the cross is where we see the convergence of great suffering and God's forgiveness. Do you know in Psalms 85.10, it prophesied this. David sang prophetic psalms all the time. It says this. It refers to a day when righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Isn't that beautiful? This is the time. This is the prophetic time where righteousness, the cross, and peace have collided together. That means when you receive Jesus, you have been kissed by God to receive the peace of God for forgiveness, grace, and mercy of everything that you have gone through. And listen, for every sin you will commit in the future, we receive his grace and his mercy because of the power of the cross. Amen. The cross of Jesus is where that occurred, where God demands his righteousness co coincides with his mercy. God demands righteousness, but the cross, it coincides with his mercy. We receive divine forgiveness, mercy, and peace because Jesus willingly took our divine punishment and the result of God's righteousness against sin. Romans 12, 2 says, for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross on Good Friday. Knowing that it led to his resurrection, led to our salvation and the beginning of God's reign of righteousness and peace. Isn't that good? He endured the cross knowing forgiveness, salvation, and God's reign here on earth would happen three days later. Good Friday marks the day when the wrath and mercy met at the cross. And that's why Good Friday is so dark and so good. Listen, we're going to take a minute now to receive our communion together. And you know, the Bible talks about doing this in remembrance of me. So I'll give you a second to gather your little elements, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It could be your kid's baby food. <laughs> It's just symbolic of what Jesus did on the cross. And there's so much power in receiving this, these elements, the, the cracker, which is the body that was broken. You know, back in the day, we used to actually break it. And I'll break mine because, you know, we're saying, Jesus, you gave your life on that cross. And, and, and the, the juice or the water is symbolic of the blood that was shed for our forgiveness, for healing. What do you need today? Because I believe there is miracle working anointing coming through the communion today. Because this is Good Friday. And we're remembering what he did on that cross. 
And we're going to do this in remembrance. We're looking back nostalgic today that, God, we're so thankful. Father, we're so thankful that you laid your life down. Jesus, we're so thankful that the crown of thorns went through your head that we might have the mind of Christ today. We're thank you, thankful for your blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And every stripe on your back was for our healing. Every stripe on our back was for freedom and deliverance and breakthrough, Father God. And we thank you, Jesus, for this moment today that as we receive our communion, God, it's not just a religious time, but we connect to the supernatural right now, God. And, and, and there's healing just going forth right now. And so, Lord, we receive your bread, which is your body. And we receive your juice or water, which is your blood. And right now, I decree that the healing power of God is going to rush over your body in the name of Jesus. I believe God is healing joints, in the name of Jesus. I believe that arthritis is fleeing from your body right now. I thank you that healing in the mind and the tormenting spirits are stopping. I know right now spirits of depression and oppression are being released from you now in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you that cancer has to flee right now. I thank you, Father God, that spine, spinal bifida is being healed right now. The spinal curvature is being healed right now, God. I decree in the name of Jesus that the wonderful, supernatural, miraculous power of God is touching children, touching babies, touching marriages, Father God, touching relationships. I decree that now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We thank you that there's power in the cross because of the resurrection that followed. And Father, we love you today. We give you glory. Go with us today. Go with us and let us feel your presence and your power. And we give you praise in Jesus' precious name. I love you all so much. Have a wonderful Good Friday. I can't wait to see you Easter Sunday, 9 a.m., 1030. We have a great day planned for the entire family, and we're going to celebrate our risen Savior. announcements that we are excited to share with you about what's going to be going on at Faith Builders and all the fun events that we have coming up. If you'd like to know more about Faith Builders Church, we have our Rooted 101 membership class coming up on Sunday, April 11th at 8.45 a.m. For registration and more details, feel free to check out the events page on our website. And for all our couples out there, our Merry Night is coming up Friday, April 23rd at 7 p.m. We hope that you'll join us for some fun, fellowship, and most importantly, food. Check out our event page on our website for more information and to sign up for childcare. We hope to see you that Friday. Sunday, April 4th is Easter Sunday at nine o'clock and 10.30 a.m. We have a fantastic service planned for you from the worship all the way through the message. You don't wanna miss it. Bring your friends, bring your family, bring everyone. Make sure to also invite the special CEOs in your life. The who? You know. Christmas and Easter only? No, I'm sorry. You, you don't have those? No, I'm sorry. We also have some fun events after Easter service for your friends and your family. We've got face painting, we've got train rides. Don't forget free Kona ice. That's yes. right. And photo backdrop selfie. Thank you so much for joining us at Faith Builders Live. I hope God impacted your life in a powerful way. Before we let you go, I wanted you to have an opportunity to be able to give and connect with us. You can do so by following the link in the description below or feel free to download our app. Thank you again for joining us today. We hope you have a great week and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday.